So what happens if you take on an Airbnb property and you can't get it filled up? Well, look, in this video, I'm going to be walking you through the different things that you can look at to see what the issues are to allow you to correctly diagnose the problem. Now, look, ideally, you don't want this to be an issue from the start. But if this does become an issue, which, you know, potentially it can, these are the things that you could be looking at to allow you to make sure that you're fixing that problem ASAP. But look, if you take value from this video, I appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Without further ado, let's get started with it. And look, the first thing, the absolute first thing that you want to make sure that you're checking when it comes to, you know, your Airbnb or service accommodation, not getting fully booked up is the location of your property. Ideally, before you even take on a property, you want to obviously make sure that the property itself is in the ideal location. I've seen other people, you know, take on properties in areas that are not the best, are not the most ideal. You know, they had certain thoughts on those areas. They thought they could make it work, but it turned out to be far from the case. And in some instances, they were actually losing money because those properties right there they were renting properties from the landlords and then obviously they were you know putting it on airbnb and booking.com and they weren't making enough money to even pay the landlords rent so this is definitely a risk that's involved with it if you're getting it in the wrong location so in order for you to make sure you're obviously getting in the right location you need to make sure that you're doing correct due diligence and thorough analysis on an area to be able to determine whether or not an area can work well for service accommodation and also airbnb as well so look one of the tools that you can use to allow you to see whether or not an area works well is a tool called air dna now, how AirDNA works is it allows you to track the data on Airbnb to see, first and foremost, how booked up the properties are around that area, you know, how much on average they're charging per night, and also how much revenue on average they're making per year. So that's one good data point that you could use to help you out. Another thing that you can make sure that you're checking out is, you know, the companies that are based in that area. Are there any big corporate companies that have their hubs there, that have their HQs? You know, this could be a very good way for you to analyze to see whether or not there's corporate demand in that area. And the really good thing about targeting, you know, business travelers, corporate demands is that they can book quite long term. You know, I had quite a lot of properties in Canary Wharf before and the bookings we used to get for business travelers, they used to book, you know, two, three, four, sometimes even five months at a time. And this is a very, very good thing. So definitely go about checking that out. You can easily just Google that, you know, and find out the information about these different types of companies that are based in an area. Another thing that you can actually spot or check check out to allow you to assess them on an area is to see whether or not there's a lot of construction work taking place. If there is, and it's happening for a certain period of time or a long period of time, then this could be a very good way for you to target, you know, contractors that are working in that area. You know, similar to corporate workers, these people tend to book long term as well. So you can definitely use that to your advantage 100%. Not only that as well, what you could also look at are the different attractions in that area. So what actually brings people to that area? You know, are there landmarks? Are there tourist attractions perhaps there's you know universities that people are attending and they have family members coming to check them hospitals can be a very good i wouldn't really call that an attraction but you know a lot of people are visiting hospitals on a regular basis you've got families checking other people and just different things that just bring people to the area this is very very important if you're doing this correctly it will allow you to get all the different pieces together and then just kind of make or paint a full picture of the area to see whether or not it works well for you know airbnb and service accommodation that's the very first thing you want to make sure that you're checking is the area. Now look, if you've gotten the area correct and you know potentially there's still an issue for you to actually get your Airbnb or service accommodation property booked up, the next thing you can look at is your pricing strategy. Are you overpricing your property? Are you charging a lot, lot more than what the competition are charging? And then you notice in because of that, you're not getting as much bookings. Now, some people can make this mistake right here. Ideally, what you want to be doing to allow you to avoid doing this is by using something called a dynamic pricing software. What a lot of people do themselves, especially beginners, people that are new to the game, they tend to price their properties night by night manually, meaning they do it themselves. And this is just a rookie mistake that you don't want to be doing. First and foremost, it takes up a lot of time. And second of all, you know, you are going to be required to constantly be doing that, which obviously is going to take up a lot of time, like I mentioned before. But not only that as well, you're not going to be able to see when the peak seasons or the peak periods are. You know, if it's, this is being done automatically, it's going to automatically adjust your pricing to allow you to, you know, price your property um, very high during peak periods when there's maybe events, there's a lot of things happening. And just during in the summer periods, for example, if you're looking at hotels, you will notice that every day they're charging something different. You know, if you book a hotel today, it's going to be a different price than it was the day before. And if you book a hotel tomorrow, it's going to be a different price than it was today. This is them using a the dynamic pricing software. Now, one of the dynamic pricing softwares you can use, and this is the most popular one out there, is called Price Labs. This is one that I've used myself. Many of my clients 
shoes than most people use when they actually have their service combination properties. By you using this and by you programming it and setting it up properly, this will allow you to, you know, price your property accordingly and obviously charge a reasonable price to allow you to get more bookings coming your way. So the next thing that you want to check up on to allow you to make sure that you actually have a decent amount of bookings coming in and you're not struggling with that is by you making sure that you're optimizing your listing. For example, how are the photos on your listings on places like Airbnb and booking.com? The worst thing that I see people do is actually take photos on their phones. This is by far um, a bad, bad move. The thing you have to understand is that your photos on your Airbnbs and service combinations, they are very, very powerful marketing tools. Even when I'm on my phone and I'm searching for service combination properties to book, you know, I'm getting drawn towards the properties that look the best. Do you see what I'm saying? So they are giving themselves an edge just by simply investing a little bit more into setting up the property to make it look really nice, to make it really stand out, make it really colorful, and obviously hiring a professional photographer to, you know, take those photos for them. This is something that's highly recommended and if you haven't done that, and I know a lot of people that don't do that, you're, you know, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot. The next thing you want to check out is the description. Make sure you're getting in detail about the property itself, about the location, highlight some of the features about the properties, and also why people should be, you know, coming to that property. What does the area have to offer? Where is it close to? And all these different things. Not only that as well, you want to make sure that you are actually highlighting the right amenities for that property. And this one's very, very important because you may get certain properties that that, you know, require parking. And this is probably one of the most important amenities there are. You know, a lot of people do search for properties that actually have parking. Now look, that's not to say that properties that don't have parking, you couldn't make it work because I've had many properties in the past where, you know, they, it didn't come with parking, but we still made it work. And the reason for this was because, you know, the locations uh, those properties were in were in prime locations. I would say if your properties are, you know, not in prime banging locations and they're a little bit out there, you know, on the outskirts of the city center or town center, maybe even further out a lot of the times parking is required and if you don't have parking this would be a reason why you would be struggling to get bookings for your property what some people do when properties come that don't have parking that absolutely need parking they would maybe hire a separate parking space you know they go online they'll see if anyone's renting out parking spaces in an area maybe they'll contact the local council to see you know if there's any parking bays that they can rent all these different things so that's very very important as well and also just make sure that you're checking out you know what the popular amenities are in that area you can feel free to just check out the competition see what amenities they're offering and if you're noticing a common thing a common pattern amongst loads of these different airbnbs and service combinations then 100 percent that could be a sign as well and also airbnb you know it does show you what popular amenities there are in certain areas also on top of that as well booking.com actually have a section called the opportunity center now if you're going to the opportunity center and you actually have a property listed on booking.com you they will give you suggestions in relation to to different ways that you can go about optimizing your property so that you know it, it can be pushed out to more people so if you're going on there you're implementing some of the suggestions this can definitely help you big time as well also another very very big thing that's going to make all the difference when it comes to your airbnb and service combination properties getting all the bookings or getting very low bookings are the reviews that you're receiving for that property it is so so important that you're making sure that you're doing everything in your power to build up as many good reviews as possible obviously this comes with you offering a very high quality service when it comes to you promoting your property you want to make sure that you're catering to your guests the way they deserve to be catered to you want to make sure that you're attending to any problems asap and you want to make sure the property itself is absolutely squeaky clean obviously this comes down to your cleaners making sure that you're hiring professional cleaners as well and all these different things it's so so important because look if you're getting that part wrong um, it will be the reason why you're not making that much money from your property and you may even be losing money in some cases because if people check out your property and it's really nice it's got very nice pictures it's in a prime locations, but it's got bad reviews that will put a lot of people off when it comes to booking the property and rightfully so, they should be put off. So this is something very, very important that you want to make sure that you're getting right from the start to allow you to build up on as many good reviews as possible. If you're doing this and you're doing this correctly, not only will you get more people booking your property, but at the same time as well, you'll also be able to charge a premium for your property as well because you've established trust, you've established credibility and people are paying for an experience. Whenever they're booking service accommodations, whenever they're booking Airbnbs, they are paying for you know a quality experience and by you having loads 
of good reviews, it verifies that everyone else has had a quality experience and also the likelihood of them having that same experience is gonna be very high as well. So these are definitely all the different things that you can go about checking out when it comes to, you know, if you have an Airbnb or service accommodation property that's not getting that many bookings, these are the things that you can go about, you know, um, checking out to see whether or not you're diagnosing the problem correctly. And obviously to put the right solution in place for that. Or if you're just someone that wants to, you know, have this in mind before taking on a property, then 100% this could help you out too. But look, I hope you take a massive, massive value from this video right here. If you do, I really appreciate if you hit that like button. If you're looking to learn more about service accommodation, rent to rent, property in general, I am putting content out there on a weekly basis. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. But look, if you want to find out more about how you can start and build a rent to rent service accommodation business and find out more how we can work together with you to help you do that, you can feel free to click the link in the description box below to schedule a call with one of my team members. But look, without further ado, I'll let you go. I'm going to catch you in the next video.